praise you, Jesus, my only hope is you. From early in the morning to late at night, my only hope is you. My only peace, my only peace is you, Jesus. My only peace is you. From early in the morning to late at night, my only peace is you. My only joy, my only joy is you. Jesus, my only joy is you. From early in the morning to late at night, my only joy is you. Your all that I need, your all that I need is you. Jesus, all that I need is you. From early in the morning to late at night, all that I need is you. All that I need is you. All that I want is you. All that I want is Jesus. All that I need is Jesus. All that I even have is Jesus. What else do I have? You know, some people trust in their horses and chariots, in their bank accounts, in their houses, in their all of those things. I don't have none of that. Nothing. 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 I'm living in my mother's house at 44. I have nothing. Nothing to show to the world. Nothing apart from Jesus career all of those things i don't have i'm just doing what i'm doing but now i can't brag about that all i can brag about is jesus the love of god for me and that's enough for me anyway that's enough that's enough frankly speaking you know there's this song oh my god i was seeking i was searching and i couldn't find nothing that could bring peace to my heart that could fill me up with joy that could oh my goodness father god in the mighty name of jesus i just want to thank you this morning i want to thank you for giving me jesus i want to thank you for loving me so i want to thank you for using me so I want to thank you for strengthening me so. I want to thank you for guiding me so. I want to thank you for leading me so. I want to thank you for chastising me so. I want to thank you for your Holy Spirit, which comforts me so. I want to thank you, Papa, for being my good shepherd. I want to thank you, Papa, for your word. I want to thank you, Papa, for the blood of Jesus. All I want to do this morning is thank you, Papa. Thank you for these three boys you blessed me with, you sent to this world through me, Papa. You found me worthy when I couldn't even see nothing in myself. Thank you for not letting me take myself out of this world when I was so, so desperate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for changing my life. Papa, I now want to pray for all those who are seeking you earnestly. Who are, who are hoping, who are praying, who, who are even on the, on, on, on the lines about to give up, Father. Where are you? They say, where are you, Papa? They look up to you for things, Papa. Your word reminds us, Father, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34, that you know it all. You know all what we need, Papa. That if you can clothe the grass, you can feed the birds, what less of us. 
Papa, give us a strong heart to stand firm, to stand strong during the trials and the tribulations that are inevitable in this world, in this life. Especially when we decide to follow you, Jesus, become your disciples and carry your cross and run with a great commission. Oh God, help us. Holy Spirit, teach us that no, 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 no. The race is not for the swiftest, not for the fastest. And that it is not by mind, nor by power. Bring it to our remembrance that our Father says he will not leave us nor forsake us. And that we are more than overcomers. If we love Jesus, we trust him, we follow him. It's not an easy road. It's not a broad road. It's not a wide road. It's narrow. And we have to seek earnestly to even find it. There's so much out there that confuses people and make people think it's in all the piety and in, in all the fasting and in all those things. And all those things, sometimes they, they wear our hearts out. They make us so faint. It's in you, Jesus. It's in looking up to you, setting our, our faces like flints and looking up to you and you only. You are the one who gives us all of those, the strength we need for the journey and the grace we need to bear it all. Oh God, help us. Thank you, Papa. Holy Spirit, lead this morning devotion. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Tribe, our morning devotion is taken from, um, oh my God, Psalm 27 verse 14. The theme for the devotion is a strong heart. You know, recently when I was sick, my heart started to beat so fast. There was a night when my heart was beating like, it was like it was coming out of my chest. And at the same time, I was having a, a dream. And that was the second time I was having that dream. I was in a hospital and they were trying to, to stabilize my heart. The first time I had it, it was in the village. And I didn't know what to do. And I just prayed for my heart. I didn't understand the dream. But there were doctors around me trying to stabilize my heart. And then, not too far from me, there was another woman. They could not find the heartbeat of her baby. It was a baby, I remember. And this lady, she was so grieved. And she was praying, and I could hear her prayers, although she was not praying aloud. She said, Papa, I cannot. they cannot find the heartbeat of my child. And that's another person there whose heart is beating so fast. Can you not take some of that uh, pause and put in my child? I did not know that the Lord was asking me to intercede for this woman. You know, you grow every day. So when I came back here and I was really sick that night, and my heart started to beat that fast, and I had that dream again. And then I got up and I was like, Papa, what is this now? He said, take your heartbeat. So I was like, Papa, I don't have the, 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 the thing to measure it. I'd given it away long ago. And... Um, all of that he said download an app on your phone so i went quickly to play store app to measure heartbeats and i downloaded the app and i followed the instruction how to measure that first night it was 127 uh what is bpm or hbm or whatever hbm heartbeat per minute or beat per minute B bpm something like that so when i checked on Google, the normal uh, heartbeat for my age range was between 60 and 100. So I was 27 heartbeats more. So I was like, Papa, 27 heartbeats more. And that woman, they cannot even find a heartbeat for her child. Okay, Papa, take this 27. I even add it to 40, please, and put it in that child. And then I started now praying back for this woman. So the next day when my sister, I called my sister. Was it? I just called her. I said, I told her in the morning, this is a dream I had. Please, let's agree together. Let's pray this prayer for this woman. I don't know me which hospital she is in, you know, but I, I, this is the second time I'm having this dream. So 
It's not a joke. This child needs a strong hand. Let's pray. And we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And even before I woke up that morning, the heartbeat had come down once I just said like that to Papa. And the heart doesn't beat that fast anymore and everything. And I'm just praying that this child has gotten that um, they found the pulse. And because it had been a week between the first gym and the second gym, and they were still in the hospital. So we praise God for that. So the scripture for today is Psalm 27 verse 14 wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord wait on the lord who are you waiting on me uh, even this morning I, I was looking at my my calendar because uh, my end end of third quarter is coming and i have to go for a retreat and um uh, I, I mean honestly i was like papa i don't want to do it in this house i want to go and uh, you had promised me that i will go back to that retreat center um I, I i think it might have been in december but i'm just trying to see if it can be at the end of september so i was looking at my calendar and you know i have to go to the village twice every month first saturday and last and third saturday so the dates were kind of not too far apart and i was like ah papa doesn't matter i can go in on the first come out on the fourth and then go to the village on this on the feet or the come out on the third go to the village on the feet whatever so after i just said well papa you are the boss so it, i'm just thinking aloud but whatever you decide i will follow me i don't have me the heart to disobey you i mean there's so uh, there was a small disobedience recently and it dealt with my heart so frankly speaking even if it's a 1000 francs instruction i will obey and walk on foot frankly speaking so wait wait let your waiting be on the lord wait he's what waiting for i was watching something and some people were so I don't want to say impatient, but I don't know, you know. Uh, they were ready to go to Babalawo and all of that after nine years of childlessness. I heard of a pastoral couple who were renowned for praying for people and they were just having babies and they themselves stayed for 12 years without having um, a child. And I also know of a pastoral couple in the U.S., they ended up adopting you know two children because they couldn't have and yet they will pray for people and the people will conceive you know so that's some of those things you don't understand zachariah was said to be a man who was righteous before the lord service and all of that yet he and elizabeth they had no child until the lord sent them john the baptist in the way he sent and all of that and so sometimes i don't know you know i i told myself long ago because this life like this is not to be lived forever i will not live forever whatever the lord doesn't give me i would offer it to him and say oh papa you're giving me so much so i will focus on what you've given me I don't know. He never disappoints the waiting soul. He might not give you exactly what you are waiting for and trusting him for, but he will give you so much more, the comfort, the everything, the everything. I don't want to go into that. People are saying, oh, well, people are looking for marriage and people are looking to get out of marriage and all of those things. Whatever, what I know is that Jesus is, is the best thing for me, frankly speaking. There's nothing on a child, husband, mother, father, nothing that can that can satisfy me. So I'm not looking for nothing. I used to look for things and marriage and stuff. I thought about it all. Once I had Jesus, I was like, no, 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 no. Jesus is enough for me. I'm not looking for anything anymore. Frankly speaking, I'm just waiting on him. His next assignment, his next this, his, 
his next revelation, his next, oh my goodness, his next, the next time we'll just be together. That's all I'm looking for. Indeed, when I was sick, oh God, on Thursday night, frankly speaking, I saw the heavens. I saw that garden. A door was open. I was like, Jesus, if, if, if it's my time, I'm ready. Papa, let's go. The door just closed. Bam! Vision gone. <laughs> I knew there wasn't time. So in the morning when my son came, I said, Mama, don't lock the door again when you are sick. Secondly, don't come and die. Yo. Let's take you to the hospital. I was like, no, I will not die yet. My God is able. He told me that it's not time. I'm not dying. Don't be worried. Just pray for Mama. While waiting, keep your keep up your spirits. While waiting, keep up your spirits. Don't be sad. The lady I was watching in the movie, I didn't even go half. She was so sad. She was so frustrated. She was so depressed. She, she fell out with her husband. She nobody could console her anymore. She wanted a child. I once watched a movie, and I also know that it has happened to a lady. They so badly wanted a child, they went to somewhere and covenanted something and said all they wanted was a child. Really? The child they had. They started saying, Jesus, all I want, all we want is you. Please take this child. Jesus is not the one who gave them the child. Why to take the child? The child was what they call Obanje, sick, 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 manifesting every day, all of that. They could not appease that child. And they finally had to take the child back to the oracle. That was in the movie. In real life, I don't know what that woman ended up doing with her child. It was just a story I heard. But about somebody, someone knew. Be careful what you are waiting on God for and where you go to in your desperation to find it. Though. Huh. Expect a great deliverance and be ready to praise God for it. God's ways are not our ways. His time is not our time. God will strengthen your heart. This promise goes right to where you need help. If the heart is healthy, all the rest of the system will work well. You see people serving God, praising God, you know, worshiping him. They have needs. You know, what, what are my needs now? But it's not like I have everything, but I just know that God knows it all. And I'm like, nah, uh, money, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not hitting on those ones. Nah, uh, just want to be healthy and be ready to go when he says go. And to just seek him more and more, to fellowship more and more with him. Those are my needs now. But those are needs, yeah? So people have. But no, I don't uh, make like... Oh, uh, my heart is going to cut now. My heart is going to fail. Oh, my heart, oh, my heart, my heart, oh, my heart. Because you can have high blood pressure only from being frustrated and desperate about your needs. So, okay, oh. But God will strengthen your heart. This promise goes right way to where you need help. If the heart is healthy, all the rest of the system will work well. You want to continue living while you are waiting. You don't want to just lie on your bed cover yourself up and say oh, until the lord gives me a child i'm not leaving this room again oh, until the lord gives me a financial breakthrough i'm not leaving this room again oh, until the lord gives me a career i'm not leaving this room again oh, until the lord gives me a spouse i'm not leaving this room again uh -uh, it doesn't work that way you cannot go and sleep on the altar forever if the uh the heart wants calming and encouragement and both of these will come if it is strengthened yeah i mean you can even encourage yourself once your heart is good a forceful heart rests and rejoices and forces force into the whole person. A forceful heart, that is a, a healthy heart, yeah. No one else can get at that sacred vessel of life, the heart, so as to pour strength into it. No one. Any appliance and all of those things that they can put on the heart to strengthen it. Uh, uh, those are just hospital things now. I've tried. I was once in Belgium. They put those things. Gave me that thing to take home. All of that. Uh, uh, if I just make one minute without that thing. They, they had once to explode. 
I had to chuck it every day and all of that and stuff like that. Uh, uh, God is good. He alone who made it can make it strong. God is full of strength and therefore he can impart it to those who need it. Be brave for the Lord will impart his strength to you. And you will be calm in the storm and glad in sorrow. The way I was calm. Oh God, I swear I thank him for that. And and what he did to strengthen my heart the very first night, to keep me up and give me this exhortation. What do you do when sleep evades you? For whatever reason, you are sick, you are anxious, all of that. Praise God. So praise now became my thing. I was praising. I would even sleep with, uh, uh, you know, some praise and worship on. And I, myself, my lips, no strength on them. The little thing is, I praise God. Uh, uh, that was it. I said I was weak to the point where I could not leave my bed to go to the restroom, which is just next door. I had a party in this room. I couldn't eat nothing. Yes. And we were on a journey. And I wasn't ready to stop that journey. So yes, I saw those demons, they back up. I would cast them out, blood of Jesus, stuff like that. Nope, the temptation, just, just give it up now. Uh, uh, let me go. I will not. The Lord strengthened my heart. This is me today. I can write as David did. Yes, wait for the Lord. I do indeed say it. I know by long and deep experience that it is good for me to wait upon the Lord. Amen. Who are you waiting on? Because whether we like it or not, there is some waiting to do in this world. Look, I am waiting for a document. I have been waiting for that document for one month. What can I do? It's not in my power. Uh, a week ago or two weeks ago, oh, they had prepared a document, then there was an error. So they had to correct it. It took like one week for the lady to correct it. Probably it was in her machine bed. She has so much more to do. Let me give the benefit of doubt. Finally, she says she has corrected it. What's happening is in the judge's office. Oh, the judge did not come on Friday. The judge came this day, but he did not sign it. They come yesterday. No, no, no. Uh, wait, let me let you know when exactly it is ready. So today, I have to go there. Because whether it is ready or not, I will go and wait in front of the judge's office. Or I will see that judge myself. I prayed about it. He will sign it and give it to me. And I will take it and go to the next step. This is not possible. A judgment could not have been delivered on the 21st of July. It's over a month and some now. But what can I do? I have to wait. I cannot go and beat somebody up. I cannot start talking. Blah, 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 blah. What is that going to do to me? Nothing. So in this world, whether you like it or not, you have to wait. You go to the road. You want to go to town. Even if you have the money, you wait for a taxi. Not all taxis are going your direction. You want to eat. Even if you have the money, you go to other food. You wait for that food to get ready. Even if you are cooking the food, you wait for the food to get ready. If you are bathing, you wait. You, you don't just go into the toilet one minute, you come out, yeah. No, every day is waiting. So how are you waiting? And who are you waiting on? Like who will strengthen you while you are doing the physical waiting? Sometimes some people just irritate you. You go to an officer, they'll tell you in some kind of language, hey, I've had time back, go and wait there. The person has said it that... that they might even go there for lunch and forget that they have been told you to wait. They come back at 4 p.m. What will you do? So instead of getting bitter and worried and, and feeling bad and saying all kinds of things, no, be praying. Say, Papa, God, you strengthen her to strengthen my own now. To the point where when they even come, they give you your document, you smile, you take it and go. Oh, oh. If Cameroon has not taught you a lesson, uh, I don't know any other, any other country that can teach me a lesson like Cameroon. I was telling somebody yesterday, my client actually, when you want to talk about Cameroon, you know. Because now, 
I, 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 I give them evidence of the process. Let them not think that I'm the one we just playing around. Huh. Father, thank you for teaching me in the sacred place how to wait. To the point where when I step out physically and I have to wait, I'm no more, I'm no more bothered about it. I used to have anxiety. Oh God, this kingdom, if I don't carry it around and finish, because it, it, it just gives me, it used to give me some comfort. And then I have to be reading in a taxi anywhere so that I, I, I should not be anxious. I should not be nervous. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And, and, and sometimes even when it's a good news, I am, I am, I, I once had a crisis when I went to sign some grants at the U.S. Embassy. It was, oh my goodness. Right in there, they were calming me down. They took me to a separate room, gave me tea, this and that. Oh, it was terrible. I got home. I, oh, no, 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 no. I used to like, Father, please, Papa, take it away. So I know how desperate someone can get. But when you give it all up to the Lord, he strengthens your heart. It's not like he will take it away. No, he will strengthen your heart. So that you are going through the process. You are going through with a strengthened heart. My only hope is you, Jesus. Father, thank you for this morning devotion. Holy Spirit, thank you. Continue to have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. What are you waiting for? Okay, everyone. Uh, have a wonderful Wednesday, right? You want to join us for Isaiah chapter 3 today with my sister princess, Isaiah chapter 4, sorry. It's, I, 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 oh my God, the very first verse of that chapter four, I'm like, hey, Papa, oh, it has gotten that bad. Okay, oh, the link is there. And uh, my bishop, Church Without Words Evangelistic Association. So many, so much nuggets, nuggets, nuggets. And then you want to connect with us, the ministry. Our hey link is there. Um, Frankly speaking, you want to support our evangelism outreach in the village of Mangamba with the little children. Oh, it's becoming so beautiful. And I am just so honored and humbled, right? Yes, to be serving my Lord in that capacity. So you want to come along and see for yourself or you just want to support us, you know. We are just so grateful for our partner and um, those who support us in whatever little way. We are not a big ministry and we are not looking for hundreds of thousands and millions. No, the little we get, we thank our Papa God, we lift it to him. We go and sow those seeds in the lives of those children and all of that. I'm so grateful, right? Thank you those who, um, you know, follow, like, share, do whatever, comment, or just take things, take some word, some rem or something and just run with it. And it impacts you, whether you give me your testimony or not. It's all for the glory of God. Okay, everybody, take care. God bless us all.